Welcome to the next project tutorial number five in which we're going to be continuing to work on our light system. And just as a quick reminder, what we currently have is the PLC program, which is switching between two distinct lights, one which is going from north to south and the other one east to west. And today we're going to be implementing a control scheme. So we only currently have a an overview page which allows us to see the status of the lights, but we cannot modify any of the parameters on our system. So today we're gonna to be focusing on allowing some kind of a control feature, which is going to be sending signals from the HMI system back to the PLC and allowing us to change certain parameters. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. All right, so it's often seen as a good practice to control the HMI from a different screen from a, essentially a pop-up rather than from the main overview screen because there's a couple of reasons for that. So first of all, you might want to enable certain security features such as user login or logout, and you want certain users not to be able to make changes. However, today we're just going to implement the buttons and we're not going to focus on security as much, but the control screen, like I said, will still be separated so that you can't inadvertently click on them without going to that specific screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is implement this navigation bar. And I've just put out a rectangle. What I'm going to do is go into the display settings. And once again, double check the width and the height because I do want my elements to be extremely well lined up so that the HMI looks nice and neat in general. So as you can see, the width here is 800. Therefore, I'm going to look at the width of a rectangle and pick something. So usually I start off with 800 and then I think about what kind of margins I want to give. And typically I give it about eight pixels or so. Um, eight or 16 would be a nice number. So we're going to simply do some simple math and put in 784, which is going to be 16 pixels off each side. The other thing that I want to change, of course, is this left eight. I also want to remove the border. I don't usually like to keep the borders from the rectangle that's going to be here. So I'm going to select none. Next, I'm also going to change the height. So the height, I want the buttons to fit in without within the same essentially margin as my um, as my bar and what I'm going to use here is instead of usually I'd go for let's say 100 that's going to be the starting point but then I want margins inside of 8 pixels and I want my buttons to be around 64 height so I'm going to do 64 plus 16 which equals to 80 very simple math and since we're at 80 we're going to double check once again the display settings and we're going to look at the height which is going to be 600 therefore if we want to have the same equal spacing on all sides what i'm going to do here is not edit i'm going to right click and go into properties once again and since we are at 80 and we need to be positioned at think of this as 500 plus 80 is going to get us to 580 so we want five 20 minus 8 which is going to be 512 and this 512 is essentially what I'm doing here is I'm figuring out uh, the amount of pixels I need on each each side and here it's going to be 8 like I've mentioned a couple of times so this looks like a decent sidebar what I usually do is I change this color I don't like this green I'm going to make it this kind of light color let's say here let's do this one and it's not uh, it's not perfect. I also want to change the display settings. Usually you don't want to leave it white. I don't know why, but uh, white just seems to be way too uh, way too bright. Let's see here if we can do this third color. Okay, that looks okay for now. Actually, in this case, since we have a road, we can have some kind of a very very light greenish. Let's see. That's uh, I think that's a little bit too dark for my liking. So I'm going to get this green. And we're going to try this, for example. I think that's way too, way too, uh, too bright. And it's not an exact science. It really depends on what you want to see on your screens. It doesn't have to be um, perfect on the first run. And we can play with this a bit later on. Now, the thing that I like to do with my bars is that I'm going to essentially create a, the same bar. I'm going to go into properties and I'm going to give it 
a height that's going to be three pixels more than what we had as well as the width so that's going to be three pixels on both of those then I'm going to change the back to be slightly darker than what we've given the other sidebar and I'm also going to bring this one to the front so arrange sent to the front and then I'm going to align both of them together so this one's going to go up sorry to the left and then top and then I'm going to select the one that's behind and I'm going to adjust it by holding down the shift key and then pressing my arrow keys by one pixel left and then one pixel top. And in case you haven't noticed that that has given me essentially like an outline um, which simulates kind of a shadow and it makes that navigation bar sort of 3D-ish. The next thing that we need to do is populate a couple of buttons. I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet to figure out the optimal value but essentially what I'm doing here is my polygon which is going to be of width 784 I need to divide it by an equal number and then add some spaces in between so I'm going to show you exactly how to do this so here's the spreadsheet that I've designed for myself and essentially what the spreadsheet does is allows me to enter a certain dimension so as you remember my bar was 784 pixels wide and here I have the spacing between my elements and the number of elements it's really simple calculations you can probably figure out just by looking at the formula over here but essentially what this spreadsheet like I said does is I can select a certain spacing between my buttons so for example if I want eight pixels then I look for a value which is going to be of of a whole number so for example if I choose four buttons then I need to space them out eight pixels apart and essentially that's going to give me a width per button of 186 now I don't want to have only four buttons I'm aiming more for six or eight so I can select either the number of elements or number of uh, pixels so if I want six then if I want 10 pixels between my buttons I'm going to have to give it 119 pixels of uh, with and that's going to be a right value. I really like this 119 should be okay So let's go back into our application and we're going to implement exactly that. So here. I'm going to create an object This is going to be a display navigation and It's going to be a go-to and I'm just going to create it here on the side Let's see here. So the height as you remember 64 and then the width is going to be 119 So that button is going to look like that let's go system overview so the system overview is going to be the main button here on the side and of course it's not going to leave the to the main to the main page we're just going to place that in here for now and i'm just aligning based on the pixels that are showing at the bottom here because i know exactly where this needs to go so what i'm going to do next is copy paste a lot of these buttons for five six and like the spreadsheet mentioned we are going to have six of them so what i'm going to do is test that out to make sure that everything is aligned correctly i've given them the width of 119 and usually that should be correct something is not right let's see here so 119 this needs to be a little bit to the side let's see if that aligns correctly so something is not right in my calculation let's double check this once again so I'm going to reselect all of those buttons and I'm going to realign space horizontal I believe now we are good the spacing is correct everywhere and we are going to zoom in a little bit I like to kind of go in and see if everything is of the exact same width it looks like this button is still off by a pixel so I'm going to fix that and double check 784 let's see here 784 and then this button is going to be yeah that's correct it looks like we are at x16 and then this is going to be at 665 yeah that's correct so that looks like everything should be aligned properly so i'm going to save the screen and that's going to be the alignment essentially of the let's see here that's going to be the alignment of our buttons so system overview is going to bring us to the main screen and this is going to be called the system control system control and I'm going to apply this 
And what I'm going to, usually what I do is I go into each one of these buttons. Since they are placeholder buttons, I'm going to just put one invisible. So this means that during runtime, although the buttons are still there, they are going to be invisible and they're not going to be able to be pressed by anybody. So let's see visibility one apply close animation visibility one invisible close and just to demonstrate that that uh, functionality as you can see we only have those two buttons the other ones are just placeholders so you can always leave them for the next person that's going to interact with your system that being said like i've mentioned a couple of times this system overview should not be a button on the main screen so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create this object which is going to be a rectangle as well as a as well as a text so 119 by 64 just to match the button 64 119 apply and this let's say the back color is going to be some kind of a pressed you know that you are on the screen line style is going to be solid that's okay uh, it doesn't need to be perfect for the first iteration we can always fine tune and make it nicer a little bit later on let's go drawing back and then we need to text and here I'm going to type in exactly what I had in the in the button overview system overview and this is going to be size 14 I believe I made it size 14 and we're going to select both elements align them together to the center points is this is this really 14 I just want to double check the label is 14 okay perfect so I'm going to group both of these together so that they become one and I'm going to position this bottom and then left and let's see here so I'm going to keep clicking until I get to the go display button and then I'm going to set the visibility to be invisible since essentially once you're on a certain screen you want that button to be highlighted and once we develop screens that are going to be full screen then it's going to look exactly like that so for example if you play the button as you can see the if we play the screen as you can see the system overview is pressed in versus the system control is not currently opening a screen but we will program it to do so and let's do that right now so i'm going to right click new and this is going to create us a new display and let's see here display settings instead of being a full display this is going to be a display which is going to be a pop-up so we need to select this on top feature this is going to be display number um number zero is okay i guess uh title bar we're not going to put that in yet i like to put in my own width we're going to just start with something that makes sense we're just going to half the width and the height and then i'm going to hit apply hit okay and then i'm going to save this display give it a specific name so underscore zero one underscore system control that's going to be the name of our display I'm going to close out of this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the button that we've made which is going to navigate to that specific display go into its properties and then here on the display I'm going to put in a system control I'm going to hit apply hit OK and we should have the pop-up which is going to be controlling our system now once we are in this screen let's just create a couple of tags so today we're going to go back into the PLC and as a reminder We've created an HMI interface routine, which now we need to do the inverse of what we've done. So these were the tags that we sent to the HMI. Here we need to receive a bunch of different tags. And what do we want to control in the current system? So currently, as you remember, we have two distinct lights and there's going to be a number of different delays. So there's going to be a delay on the green light. There's going to be a delay on the yellow light. And just like for the second one, there's going to be a delay on the green and the yellow. So that's going to be the control scheme that we're going to build in today's video and so here we're going to create move instructions and essentially as you remember we have these hmi int bool so here we're going to do the inverse we're going to read from hmi and this is going to be a dint sorry it's going to be an interface and then this is going to be a dint zero and then we're going to write this into our tags, which are going to be in the light system. So here, as you remember, we have light one and light two, light one underscore green underscore T. So let's see here, light one underscore green underscore T dot 
that preset. And then we have, let's see here. So this is going to be dint one. And we're of course going to create the scheme as well. So we're going to create an array of dints. Let's create a hundred of them. Create zero, one, two, three. So one for green, and then we have one for yellow. Let's see here. So this is going to be yellow. Then we're going to also have dint two, dent three. And then this is going to be for light two, for light two. And as you can probably guess what these tags are going to do. So let's just save this like so. And we're going to change them back to the original values that they were. So this is 3000. And this is going to be 10,000. I did make a mistake here. So this is going to be green, yellow, green, yellow. So we're going to modify that and make sure that that's okay. So the lights are still operating as such, but in the next lecture, we're going to finalize that screen and essentially send those tags from the HMI back to the PLC, allowing us to modify these, time, these times from the control screen of the HMI. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.